Hello expectant mothers. Do you know that shaping your child's destiny begins long before birth? The womb is a place where children can be blessed and equally a place where children can be maimed. The Pregnancy Watch by Wanuola Adetayo is a uniquely conceived tool designed to support you in active participation in this process. Presented in an easy-to-read devotional format, this best-selling book combines the physical and spiritual insights backed by medical research to equip and empower you to fulfill the awesome responsibility of birthing new life. Dr. Yinka Moshoro, a consultant pediatrician, cardiologist and public health physician, has this to say. The Pregnancy Watch is a well-crafted and skillfully blended piece on the biological and spiritual development of a child in the mother's womb. It is for this reason that this book is highly recommended for every woman trusting God for a child and those who are already pregnant. Visit www.theshapersarc.org slash books or call 0812-402-0538 to place an order. Good day to you, our beloved viewers. It is such a delight to welcome you once again to Women on the Watch powered by the Shapers Act. At Women on the Watch, we have a commitment to exposing time-tested principles for practical application to your personal and relationship development matters. My name is Wonola Adetayo, the Shaper. To those of you who have connected with us through promotion inquiries, questions, comments, or through the purchase of our books, we want to say a very big thank you to you and God bless you. And if by chance, for whatever reasons, you are one of those that still expecting our response, we're sure you will be in touch with you very, very shortly. Today, we will be having a conversation on how to thrive in difficult seasons. And today I have with me in the studio a guest who is a personification of thriving through difficult seasons. I've seen her over the years getting into one thing or the other, and I have a very, very strong feeling within me that she has a lot that she can share with us on practical ways of thriving during difficult economic seasons. Her name, I would even like her to give, to introduce herself to every one of us so that through her mouth, we will get a clear understanding. So my sister, can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Thank you very much, Ma, for having me here. My name is um, Kofu Olaogun, Mrs. Kofu Olaogun. Um, I'm a Yoruba lady, a mother of three, happily married, and I'm an e ailing driver. That is what I do presently. Well, thank you very much. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your family status? Yeah. Yes, like I said, I am married. I have three lovely kids, two boys and a girl, and um, we are all doing well. I am um, 15 year old in marriage by this November. I... I work as an e I mean, driver, which I started just after COVID. I'm also a tailor, I sew, and um, I've done so many things like, um, uh, Mommy Adetayo rightly said, I've done so many things, so many things, but I thank God for where I am today, and I thank God for where God is taking me. Okay, having introduced yourself, first of all, I can see that our viewers now understand the fact that you are married, so you have children, and somehow or the other, you, you, you are still doing very well. 15 years in marriage, three children, a fantastic husband. Now, the entire world has been experiencing difficult economic times. So, but somehow you have managed to thrive through all of these seasons. I would like you to please share with our viewers what your experience has been, how you have been able to continue to thrive in spite of difficult economic seasons. Thank you very much, Ma. Like I said, I've done so many things. 
I am a graduate um, with a master's degree in English. And um, over the years, I've had experiences working with organizations and um, events management companies. And, you know, with the recession and everything, I had to think of what to do when there was no job anymore. How can I be a good support system at home? So I ventured into entrepreneurship. So I started um, by buying and selling. And then I moved to, in fact, as a matter of fact, I've sold bread before. Selling bread, I mean, taking it from one, I mean, house to the other, giving it to people, you know, the trickles in um, bread business. I've also done um, um, school runs before, you know, dropping children in schools and all that, making it, I mean, making a token out of it. I actually needed time for my children because they are young. So I know that I could not venture into doing, I mean, a nine to five because most nine to five tends to extend into the night. And by the time I get home and all that, so I tried the business that will make me to be able to take my children to school, come back for them. We are at home together. At the same time, I'm able to do one or two things. So eventually, I also ventured into tailoring, you know, thinking, uh, okay, what more can I do? So I learned how to sew, and I have a machine as we speak. I, I still sew. I, I do ready, I mean, ready to wear materials and um, clothes. And just um, as I was about to establish COVID, I mean, COVID happened. And you know how it is. Life happens. <laughs> so everything just went down. And I had to think of what's next. What can I do? What can I mean? How else can I thrive with all this? And I am one of those people that do not take no. That, you know, I always tell people something. If you know how to spend money, then you must know how to work. So I had to think of what can I do? And I realized I take Uber. You know, I take um, Taxify and all that. And I think I ask those drivers questions. Can a woman do this? You know, can, can a woman do this? Can I do it? And they tell me, yes, I can, but I don't have a car. What do I do? So they tell me, well, um, I kept asking these questions over and over again. Even when me and my children enter another one, they'll be like, mommy, we know you're going to ask that man a question. We know you start bombarding him with questions. You know, I kept asking and asking until I met a driver that took me to a place where he rented this car. He told me that I can rent a car and be paying on a weekly basis, which I did. I, and that was how I started. Thank you so very, very much. It's actually very interesting, you know, um, the way somehow you adapt quickly. Challenges come, and when the challenges come, you face the challenges head on. So rather than saying, oh, look, this COVID thing, it will not allow my tailoring business to work, then you watched what others are doing, and you are not shy or embarrassed, you are not terrified to enter into a new terrain. Now, I am sure that our audience would be very, very much interested. You know, you are currently an e-hailing driver. Can you actually explain what this entails, most especially as a married female? Because I'm sure that you are probably one of the very few females that have found themselves to be e-hailing drivers. Can you please explain to our audience? Okay, thank you, Ma. E-hailing driving um, is um, uh, a transportation business that you do through, I mean, e, um, we call it, it's not e-commerce, it is a um, true app application. You know, you, uh, you use your private car to run a transportation business. And um, over the years, some app companies have come into Nigeria and you know, we take them, we go to your I mean, homes, we pick you up. They actually solve a particular set of um, transportation, I mean, business in Nigeria. You know, it's not everybody having dressed for a party. It will be improper for you to go to the main road, to go and be hailing taxi or to enter a bus. So, but you know, now nobody knows who owns the car or not because you are, you'll be chauffeured right from your home 
to where you are going and back if you want. You know, just at a, I mean, at a price, which you do not do, you know, by charging or which is part of, which is what e-hailing really means. They have done the charges for you. It is only for me to use my car to render the service and I get paid for it. Mm. This is very, very interesting. <laughs> as a female, what challenges have you faced? I mean, as in the, the, the drivers that you interrogated, the drivers that you questioned, I bet they were all males. So what gave you that confidence as a female to tread in areas that people would have normally assumed is for males? What gave you that confidence? Can, can you share it? And then what challenges might you be facing for being a female? Because, I mean, the first time I entered, you know, and, and I met a female, I actually began to question her. How come, you know, because when she said, I'm like, wow, a female? You know, so what challenges have you faced? And then what gave you the confidence as a woman to go into e-healing? Um, yes, I would, let me start from the home front. Mm -hmm. That was where my first challenge started. My husband disagreed totally. He was like, no, that how can I become a driver? How can I? I said, what is in it? That there is something that I believe in. It is only a child that lift up his hand that the parents would carry. If you don't lift up your hand, nobody would help you. Now, your business is not going well. I don't have a, um, a the tailoring business is not moving. Mm. So if the two of us are just here, uh, the school fees, the house rent and all that, how are we going to do it? So it is better that, okay, what I know how to drive, I've been driving over the years. And I've asked so many guys, they said I can do it. I am, even while, while I don't have a car, I can get a rented car and start it. He said, no, this marriage with Carter, I said, eh, let it turn to pieces. <laughs> but that I will not do it. But of course, in submission. Because I had to make him to realize. Mm. So I had to follow his terms. That I don't come back late. Uh, that I, I, can, I should not neglect, you know, in quotes, my responsibilities at home. And I agreed. So, um, like I said... It was, and, and um, where I went to rent the car, I was the only female there. Mm. Uh, out of about 100 and something guys, about 70 guys, yes. I was the only female and I was married. You know, even young ladies, you know, they shy away from it, even though we have a lot of women that are doing this. We have young ladies, we have uh, widows, we have divorces, we have single, parents, um, single mothers. We have a whole lot of women that are doing this also, but just that the ratio is minimal to that of the men. But again, you know, like I said, the challenges here and there, and you know, you meet a lot of people, rude people. Mm. They talk to you anyhow. And you know, I look at myself, I look at my degree. I said, ah, but in all humility, I try, if a rider complains about me, the rider must have gone offshore because I try as much as possible to be friendly in every way. I cancel the young ones. I, you know, most of the time I am friendly with my riders, most of the time. So I've never, apart from the fact that I have been attacked on two occasions, mm. you, know, uh, you know, me and my rider were there and the robbers came from outside, mm. but I escaped. Mm. It was God. It was God. God has been faithful in doing this business. It's tiring. It could be overwhelming. But, you know, like, um, you know, I mean, you keep admonishing us that you don't relent. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't relax. I mean, you don't just sit back. Mm. When you stand up to it, you face your challenges. You know, you overcome. You don't overcome by sitting down. Absolutely. You overcome by, by standing up to it and facing it and with God, there is no time I leave home without praying. There is no time I enter into the car without committing everything into God's hands. Beautiful. And God has been faithful. Very, very inspiring. Very inspiring. I'm not even sure whether I'm that courageous, okay? So I I'd like you to just share with us briefly what critical behaviors are attributable to your success. You know, um, I'm, I'm sure that people that are listening are saying, you know what? Maybe I would like to be one. I want to thrive. Um, you mentioned to us, yes, your humility with your husband, 
following his terms, are there critical behaviors that are attributable to your success as you have moved through one economic challenge to another and you have been thriving? Mm, really, um, there are some things that are beyond our control. Whatever we cannot control, we let it, we leave it to God. But okay. whatever is within us that we can do, then we move into it, we do. Okay. Then we, we move away from negative people. Okay. I don't surround myself with negative friends. Okay. If you are telling me a negative, in fact, out of all those I mean, drivers that I interviewed, mm. it was only one or two that gave me, I mean, wrong vibes. Okay. And I was like, this person must be a lazy person, mm. Mm. you know? But in all, all of them encouraged me. Okay. And anytime I pick a man, a woman, they are happy. There are, you know, um, a lot of them would prefer to sit at the back. The ones that sit with me, we chat and all that. Those ones that sit at the back, we still chat, mm -hmm. you know, we talk. And, you know, it's, it's, it's not been, I mean, it's not been bad for me at all. Okay. It has not been bad at all. And also, I would like to state also that apart from not surrounding yourself with negative, I mean, People. vibes or mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. we should speak positively to ourselves when we are going into the day we should speak into That's our day we should speak into our day we should command the day mm. to favor us mm. you know because the truth of the matter is in the world there are a lot of chaos mm. Mm. so mm. whatever it is you want to get out of it mm. is what you see in yourself and what you i mean there are low moments there are high moments even in my low moments Mm. I try as much as possible to, to encourage, encourage yourself, yes, David. like David did. <laughs> Thank you very Absolutely. much. Yeah. So, so, so basically what, what our guest has shared with us in terms of um, the kind of behaviors that will help us uh, to succeed. She did mention, number one, very critically, our prayer lives. She said there is no time that she goes out without praying. There is no time that she enters her car without praying. And she has showed very clearly a couple of times when there could have been attacks, those prayers have helped to keep her safe, to keep her passengers safe. The second thing that she has shared with us is to surround ourselves with those who will be encouragers, not those who will discourage us. So we need to be along with people who are going in the same direction. Those who will not say to us, what's wrong with you? Look at you with all of your degree. Why are you the type that is driving people up and down the place? That is very, very critical in terms of behavior. She has also shared with us the fact that she herself is friendly. So her friendliness endears the hearts of those who are working with her, those uh, from whom she has hired the vehicles, those passengers that she's carrying, she's friendly. She has shared with us her humility to agree with her husband on the terms and conditions so that that way she would not have sacrificed her family for her job. But because of that humility and agreeableness, she is able to maintain a happy home, maintain good children, and also at the same time earn a decent living to contribute positively to her family. Lastly, she mentioned to us what I would call self-talk. It is what David said, David encouraged himself. So she says, before going out, you know what the word of God says about you. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So you need positive self-talk. No matter how many challenges that may be out there, the Bible has already said, all things work together for good for them that love God and them that are they called according to his purpose. So if we apply these various points practically, there is no reason why we will not be able to thrive no matter the condition or situation that the economy throws at us. I hope that you have been blessed by the insights provided by our guest today. She has given us hints. She has given us tips for thriving in difficult economic seasons. You know what is more important is that she has shown us that gender, age, family status cannot be an impediment to thriving in difficult economic seasons. At this point, 
I want to invite our guest once again to give us one final word of encouragement, particularly for ladies, married, single, young, old, widowed, separated. They may be having difficulties navigating challenging economic seasons at this moment. What is your word of encouragement for these people? Thank you, Ma. I think it is worthy of note to also say that um, I drop my children in school every morning mm -hmm. before I start my day. Mm -hmm. The only start, time I start earlier is when they, I mean, they are not in school. So I would like to tell every woman out there, there is nothing you cannot do. Mm -hmm. Nobody can stop you except yourself. Even when there are challenges here and there, once you rise up and believe that you can, then you will. With God, all things are possible. Tenacity, determination, and focus is the key. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so very much. If I may summarize precisely what she has just said, resilience is key. You know, you mentioned that, you know, the ability to move from one thing to another, even if you fail at one thing, yeah. you have only learned how not to do it. So the failure is only the one who, when has failed, refuses to get back up. In fact, the Bible says, the righteous man falleth seven times, and seven, seven times will. will he also rise again. And the Bible says, if you shall fail in the day of adversity, how little is your strength. So she has shared with us that resilience is a crucial factor. So we must be resilient. Don't give up. Inside of every adversity, there is opportunity. In the midst of post-COVID, yes, tailoring couldn't work, selling stuff couldn't work, but she has been able to navigate the benefit that comes through adversity. I want to urge you, if you have been blessed by this program and you wish to partner with us, please connect with us on plus two three four eight one two four zero two zero five three eight. Till I come your way next week. This is Wonola Adetayo saying thank you very thank much you, Ma. to <laughs> Mrs. Ola Ogun. Thank you. Thank Ma. you for joining us. Thank you. Ma. And uh, I want to trust God that you will apply some of the hints and tips that she has shared with us today so that you also one day will be able to share your story of how you have thrived through economic challenges and seasons that will always come our way at any time. As you do this, I pray the almighty God, he will grant you good success in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. Shalom. Mm -hmm.